Butterscotch. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 5 of our teaching uh, tutorial video series on how to make a simple game. Uh, I'd recommend if you haven't watched the previous episodes uh, to do that so you can get caught up with where we're at. And what we're working on is we're making a simple game that's kind of like uh, our game Roid Rage where you're going to be flying around an asteroid field, picking up good stuff, and avoiding bad stuff. Uh, so I'm going to fire up the game so we know where we're at. Uh, in this episode we're going to be working on something called a parallax scrolling background. So what we have so far in the game is uh, we have a spaceship that we can fly around using A and D and uh, we can pick up these little coins which are just yellow circles and avoid these asteroids which are orange squares and if we bang into an asteroid then our ship uh, explodes. So uh, so what is a parallax scrolling background? Uh, well we want to get some kind of a, a cool visual into the backdrop here, but this is supposed to be a game that takes place in space. And space is really, really far away, uh, and so we want to create the, the illusion of depth. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, just make a simple space background by just uh, putting a, an, a giant image and putting a bunch of white dots all over it to represent stars. Um, so we're going to do that uh, in our sprite editor. So we'll create a sprite, call it SP space. And we're going to edit that image. Uh, go to the image menu, and we're going to resize the frames. So by default, it's 64 by 64. We want it to be a lot bigger than that. Uh, we'll go 1024. Okay, so now if we hit this little equal sign, it'll reset our zoom to be 100%. So this is how big it actually is. Uh, so we're going to take our paint bucket. We're going to just get a super, super dark color. We don't want just black because that's a little bit too boring. Uh, maybe let's go with like a, a deep purple or something. So there's our backdrop. And then I'm going to grab the, the paintbrush tool, get this uh, little dot, get a white thing here. And I'm just going to put a couple of, put a couple of dots back here. So uh, normally we would, you know, have a separate, uh, we use a program called Inkscape to generate all of our art assets. Um, so what we're doing here is what would often be referred to as placeholder art, which is we just need something to be working. So we're just going to get this uh, put together in the game so we can get a feel for what it represents. And then later uh, our artist will come in and, and make something useful that we can actually put in that looks good. So here's our space background. And uh, just like we did with the camera object, the player object, all that stuff, uh, we have a new thing we want to do, which is draw a background. So we're going to make a new object that's called O background. So let's create that background. Um, okay, so let's go to the create event first. And the first thing we want to do is set the depth of the background to be farther back than everything else, which uh, that the depth dictates the draw order. So things that have a, a higher depth number get drawn in the back, and things that have a lower depth number get drawn in front of those things. Uh, so everything in our game has a depth that's, you know, around zero. So we'll just go with, uh, put this at 100, and that should do it. Um, and then we will uh, add an event, and we're going to do a draw event. So we want to just draw that space background in the back there. So uh, let's do that. SP space. Let's just do a draw sprite. Um, so we need to figure out where to draw this image. Uh, for now, let's just draw it at position zero, zero. And then we'll, we'll work our way over from there. Um, and then we also need to spawn this background object. And so we'll do that in the controller. And in the create event. So just like we did with the other things, uh, we're going to summon summon this background object. Okay, so our background is at depth 100. Uh, we are drawing space back there. And let's hit play and let's see what happens. It looks like there's nothing there. Uh, so why would that be? 
Uh, that's because in our room, if we look at our room here, uh, under the room editor in the layers section, and if you don't have the layers uh, window up, just go to the room menu and open up the layer view. Uh, so we have two layers going on here. We have our instances layer, which is where all of our instances of objects are. And then we have a background. And the background uh, is sitting here at, let's see, where is it? It's at depth 100 as well. Uh, so the background is just drawing this black color. So if I were to change this to say like a, you know, a blue or something, and we can see, you know, we can see it much more visibly. Um, and so really what's happening here is, yeah, our background object is there, but there's something else that's being drawn in the same place. And so it's competing with the existing background. So one option we have is to just uh, hit this little eyeball and that will just hide the background. We won't see it anymore. Uh, so let's hit play and, and see what that does. Okay. So this is pretty interesting, right? So we have now, we have our background being drawn here. But what happens when we, when we leave from outside of the new background? We get this crazy artifacting effect, which admittedly looks super cool. And if you can think of a good way to actually make use of this, uh, you know, by all means, uh, go for it. But really what's happening here is previously every frame game maker will, uh, will redraw the background and that will sort of override what was drawn in the previous frame. So you kind of think about it like a canvas where every frame we paint the scene and then the next frame, the, the computer would just draw that, that uh, solid background over the top of it and then redraw all the new stuff on top of that. And so it was kind of resetting everything uh, in the meantime. So uh, if we go into our viewports down here, uh, we need to check this box to say clear viewport background. And uh, what this should do is this should... Uh, make it so that every frame, what was drawn previously, is wiped from the memory of your video card and is not lingering and, and persistent. So now we have, we no longer have that weird artifacting effect, cool as it was. Um, so as we travel around, you'll notice our background is being drawn, but it doesn't really look like space because it's just kind of a giant uh, purple square, right? So uh, let's, for starters, let's cover the whole backdrop with that sprite to spread it out so that we can, so that we can uh, feel like we're in a much bigger area. And let's go back to our background object. And we're gonna do that by changing our draw sprite function to draw sprite tiled. And this just takes the same arguments, sprite, sub image, X and Y. And this should now make it so that this sprite just covers everything. So you see, we can keep going and there's all these dots back here. Um, so we have a background, but it doesn't really feel like space because if you notice as I'm flying past these coins and stuff, the stars, which are supposed to be really far away, are they feel like they're really close because they're moving by really fast as I'm as I'm driving around. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna fix that by attaching the uh, space sprite to the camera and having it travel with the camera. So you can kind of think about it like if you're driving down a road and you see something way off in the distance, like a, a mountain or something like that, uh, the mountain, like you can just keep looking in the same place and the mountain stays there. So you can kind of think about it from a camera perspective. As you're moving, the mountain is, the mountain is kind of moving with you uh, as far as your perception is concerned. And things that are close, like let's say there's fence posts along the road, those things are whizzing past. So as you're moving, those things are not moving with you. They just stay where they are in the world. Um, so, so the kind of the golden rule is the further away you want something uh, to be, the more you make it uh, follow the movement of the camera in a 2D game. So we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do that with this space background. So instead of drawing it at position zero zero, we're gonna do we're gonna figure out where to put it. Um, so first we're gonna retrieve the camera variable just like we did uh, over in our camera object. And we just need to know uh, where the camera is. 
So we have all these all these different uh, variables, and down here we have or different functions. Down here we have camera get view x and camera get view y. Uh, so this is this allows us to find the position of the camera. So camera x is going to be that. Camera y is going to be this. Uh, so now, if we say, instead of drawing it at position 0, 0 in the world, we'll just make it go exactly wherever the camera goes. So if the camera goes to position 100, 100, then the background goes to position 100, 100. Uh, so let's do that. So now this should make the space feel like it's much farther back. Okay, so now as we're traveling around, you can see uh, these stars are just completely locked in place with the camera. And things in things are passing in front of them, so it makes the stars feel like they're much farther away. Um, but we want to kind of get a little bit more layers of depth to this. And what you may notice is in a game uh, like Super Mario, where you can see off in the distance, or even in our games like Roid Rage, uh, we'll often do multiple layers of backgrounds back there and have them kind of moving uh, at different at different depths to to give a feeling of there being a lot of stuff back there. Um, so we're going to make another background, and let's just uh, let's create a new one. We'll call it SP Midground, and we'll just we'll put this sort of halfway between uh, the player and the stars in terms of how much it moves with the camera. Um, so I'm going to hit Edit Image. We'll go to Image Menu, Resize. We'll make this 1024 as well. Okay, and this one we're going to make, uh, instead of putting a solid color back there, we're just going to leave it transparent and just drop little little white dots all over it to represent stars. So let's do that. We don't need too much. Uh, we just need a little bit of something moving to create uh, the feeling of, of movement back there. And so it doesn't take anything particularly overwhelming. There just has to be something. Um, so let's let's go ahead and draw this now. So in our background object, so we're drawing our space background. Uh, now let's do the same thing with our midground. And so, uh, like I said, the farther away something is, the more it's attached to the camera. So one way to think about where your space uh, background is, is if you multiply it by the position of the camera, it's 100% uh, connected to the camera. So we could say camera influence equals one. So, so if we did this, and of course it would come out the same because we're just multiplying by one, right? So, uh, so then down here, we'll say camera influence equals 0.5. And we'll do the same thing we did with the space background, but now we have a different camera influence. So here we're saying this midground is 50% influenced by the camera. Uh, so we should now see it moving half as much as the thing farther away. So the way to think about it is if the camera moves 100, the midground moves only 50. So now we have this uh, cool kind of feeling of there being stuff really far back there, and then there's something much closer. Um, so that's how you do a parallax background and you can go, you can go pretty crazy with it. You know, you could do, uh, different sizes. So we can do draw sprite, uh, tiled EXT where we, uh, let's see, camera, where we rescale the sprite back there and just reuse the same sprite, just rescale it. Um, so we're zero. Do this these same uh, positioning things, but now we're doing a 0.5 influence. So you notice I switched this uh, previous one to 0.2 to kind of push it. Or sorry, this should actually be 0.8 to push it further back. Um, so then our x scale let's just do a 0.7, y scale 0.7, uh, make it white alpha of one. So this is draw sprite tiled ext. So this allows us to rescale the the image. And there we go. So now we have three layers. So we have the space layer in the far back. We have our moving stars 
a little bit closer. And then we have our shrunken down, uh, faster moving stars even closer than that. Um, so now we have this feeling like, hey, we're actually kind of, we're actually flying around in space. Uh, and this is a trick that, just like the camera stuff, you can use this throughout any game. Um, and you can build on this and do all kinds of really, really interesting stuff with it. So I hope that was informative for you. Um, so I think next time, Sam, our artist, is going to be putting together some art assets. And so in the next video, I'm going to be hooking those assets up so we can kind of see how this game goes from looking like this uh, placeholder art kind of prototype to something that's a little bit more polished and professional looking. So thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Butter. Scotch. Shannon.